CBC News. On this day, 25 years ago, the acclaimed winner of the June 12, 1993 presidential election, Chief MKU Abiola, made a public declaration that defined history thereafter. It was after the annulment of the election by the military president, General Ibrahim Babangida, and the overthrow of the interim national government led by Chief Enes Shonikon. MKU Abiola was compelled to declare himself president in that a new popular Ekwe Tedu uh, declaration, 1994. In his words, quote, as of now from this moment, a new government of national unity is in power throughout the length and breadth of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, led by me, Bashur MK Abiola, as president and commander-in-chief. After the declaration speech, head of state General Sani Abacha uh, was reported to have sent 200 police vehicles to arrest and detain Abiola you know, on charges of treason against the state. He later died in custody under suspicious circumstances on the 7th of July 1998, four years after his arrest. Now, one of the guerrilla journalists who fought for the actualization of June 12, Sunday Diary, is joining us live now from a studio in Abuja to give us a perspective to this. Sunday, it's good to have you join us right now. Let me begin, before we go into uh, uh, MQ Abiola and the significance of the Ekpetedu Declaration, let me take you to the National, National Assembly with the recent uh, development there right now. Uh, the APC has had its way right now. What did they do differently from uh, what happened in 2015? Well, I... Thank you very much for having me on this program. And I think uh, four years ago, exactly June 9th, the development that occurred at the National Assembly, when you contrast it to what has happened today, what comes out very clearly is that of political maturity, political discipline, and loyalty to party principles. All right, now, we now that the triumph. Sorry, Dari, sorry, uh, the Sunday. Now that the, yes. the National Assembly is, is now led by members that were elected or that were nominated by the ruling party, what do you think is the greatest task ahead of them? Well, we will see things will be done differently. Like I said earlier, we have the quality leadership we had longed for four years ago. But Jabir Miller comes with a wealth of experience, legislative experience. Uh, Honorable was a deputy speaker, comes with similar experience and discipline. And of course, Senator Ahmed Lawa, a disciplined lawmaker, a true party man, loyal to the principles of team work, also at the Senate. So the combination of the leadership of both the upper and the lower house will, of course, see the advent of bills and legislations that will meet the agenda and the manifesto of President Muhammad Buhari and that of the party. And that is a progressive oriented um, agenda. All right, it's just less than an hour that the Speaker House of Reps, Femi Gwajabiamila, made his uh, opening and acceptance speech. Already, the uh, social media is going agog with the line when he said that uh, I will shake the table a little bit. Uh, if you have to key into that, what areas do you think or should uh, he shake the table when it comes to reforms that he referred to? Well, you know, I might not be able to pinpoint exactly the areas it will touch, but simply we're going to see him look at some of what has happened in the past and he will try to do things a bit differently, particularly the relationship between uh, the legislature and the executive. Uh, things will move faster, there will be greater understanding. But I see that things will be done differently and Nigerians will have the better benefit of a new focused leadership at the National Assembly. All right, uh, let me take you to uh, the significance of June 12th now. It was today, 25 years ago, that uh, late chief MKO Abiola declared himself president after winning the mandate from Nigerians a year before. Uh, that 
Epetedu declaration, how significant has that been to the politics of Nigeria? How has it changed anything? Well, I think the Epetedu declaration was a sign of boldness <clears throat> on the part of M. Abiola. It was an answer to the call and the agitation of the pro-democracy movement and the radical press that felt that the annulment was illegal and should not be tolerated. So Equetedo marked the beginning of that process of galvanization of Nigerians and the near revolutionary process of resistance on the part of Nigerians to defend their democratic rights and the votes that they cast on that day. And from Equete do that journey began. The journey that shook the military to its very foundations and eventually culminated in the exit of the military from the leadership or rulership of this country. So All right. Equete do <laughs> remains extremely significant. Yes. Let me ask you, uh, you were very active at that time when it comes to the role you played uh, in, in the election, uh, 1993 election, and even after, and activities afterwards. What would you say is the role of the media when it comes to interpreting what Abiola stood for to the generation now? Well, I think the media during the June 12 agitation played a critical role, particularly a segment of the media characterized as guerrilla media. They kept in the minds of Nigerians and at home and abroad the injustice of June 12, the fact that Nigerians were ready to fight for the validation of June 12. They kept alive the desire for respect for democratic principles. But far above that, they kept the message going that military rule was dictatorial and as such unconstitutional, and that Nigerians were, have had enough of that. Now, what is the lesson for the present? We worked as guerrilla journalists. Our magazines, publications were prescribed. Editors were declared wanted on national television. Some were locked up. Some were actually assassinated and killed. But we stay focused. Journalists kept their eyes at the tip of the, step of the spear. They were not besotted with power. Rather, they were on the side of the people and the, on the side of constitutional law. So journalists must remain the vanguard in the defense of democracy Nigeria, irrespective of whether it's military rule or democratic rule. All right, Sunday, uh, MK Obiola has been described as the president Nigeria never had. Uh, in your explanation or in your perspective, what kind of president would he have been? Can you repeat that again? I, I'm the saying that MK Obiola was described as the, the president Nigeria never had. What kind of president do you think he would have been if he was made president, if he succeeded, if he wasn't killed? Well, I think we had a glimpse from his life, even as a businessman, as a philanthropist, but more so at his manifesto and his campaign mantra, which was hope, hope 93. The core of his campaign was to restore hope to Nigerians. The core of his philanthropy was to make sure education was provided, affordable health, quality education, and economic transformation. So we had a glimpse of the kind of president we'll have had. A superb humanitarian who had a tremendous capacity to help humanity and get things done. So we had a claims, like I said. And Abiola comes close being the second person to be referred to as a president that Nigeria never had. We had Chief Obafe Miawolo. And we could see from Abiola's manifesto, his political beliefs and principles, 
He borrowed heavily from that of the philosophy of our law. So we'll have had a progressive government under uh, Abiola. We'll have had a developed political culture. But we'll have had a social economic transformation like never before. And the level of poverty in this country will have been greatly reduced. Okay. But then it was never president. He died while still in detention. All right. Uh, Sunday, uh, we have Democracy Day now according to the agitations of so many Nigerians. After 25 years, there has been continuous agitation to uh, have a, a, a true Democracy Day. President Muhammad Buhari decided last year to uh, make uh, the feeling and aspiration of Nigerians come to bear. How will this impact our political culture going forward? Well, absolutely. Let me just say first, it, it took President Muhammad Buhari, after so many other presidents, to make this finally happen. And I think that Nigerians today, Nigerians yet unborn, owe, will owe President Buhari a debt of gratitude for making this to happen. I think that June 12 recognition signifies a level of justice. It signifies a level of reparation, which is one word or one particular agenda of Abiola. Nigerians who died during the struggle, those who witnessed the struggle, those who are alive today, will to an extent get some sense of justice. And I think that it is a celebration of democracy and becomes part, an integral part of our political culture. It also signposts to other leaders that when an election is held and somebody wins the election, it should be illegal, unacceptable for it to be annulled. Right. Th thank you. Nigerians should be grateful for this day. Okay. And above all, it will serve as a tonic for our democratic development and culture. All right, Sandy Dari, thank you very much for talking to us on TVC News. Sandy Dari was one of the journalists who contributed to uh, the significance of June 12th.